Good morning, AO Tribe. So I've been trying for the last 15 minutes to get onto um, my computer here. Um, I thought I had all the updates done, everything, whatever. I finally had to call my admin person to come and get my camera to work. So I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, um, let's see. Sure, I told you I would text you, but I'm on, so... <laughs> Hi. All right. I hope everybody's doing well here for the live mentor session. I have several questions I'm going to uh, read off and give my own opinions to. Um, and by the way, my name is Shelly Merrill. I own a fire protection company in Ventura, California, and I'm so happy to be here to help out wherever I can. Um, my first question is from Dan. Razumovsky, sorry if I butchered that last name. He said, what is the best way to get a customer to follow through with leaving a review? Uh, the background is when finished with deck or project, I buy my homeowners a nice bottle of wine, 50 to $120 price range. I ask them to leave me a review on platforms, but it does not happen. The current projects I am doing are anywhere from 15K to 65K in the price range. I'm looking to grow my exterior contracting company to a million dollars in profitable sales. Uh, I am looking to open more locations once all implemented systems are, uh, are working. Looking to extend uh, to large lost insurance claims, 100,000 plus, and government contracts. Right now, a veteran-owned business. Thank you for being a veteran. Thank you for your service. Um, I, I actually heard uh, a few other people answer this this question before, and I felt the same way. Um, I kind of looked at it as what if you hold off on giving them their gift or their surprise until after they've done the review. Um, one other thing is is maybe you could put in like multiple choices of like a surprise. Like it would either be a bottle of wine or a gift card or dinner somewhere. Um, maybe if they have the options to pick after they've given the review, um, that might encourage them to, um, to do that. Um, unfortunately, we can't make people do whatever we want them to do. That would be awesome, but we can't. So um, as far as encouraging them, I, I would not give them anything until they've given you your the review that you wanted. So hopefully that helps with that. My next question is from Nancy Lopez. Hi, Heather. I'd give a shout out to Heather. We've been talking this morning. Heather, I hope today goes well. You're going to be great. Stay strong. We're all here rooting for you. We love you. Okay, my, uh, my next question is from Nancy Lopez. Should I keep my six-month emergency fund completely or should I use some of it to invest in starting my business? Her background is, I have no debt, recently completed my six-month emergency fund. I have 2,000 spare to invest in kicking off my jewelry business for which I need to do so much. I can probably boot bootstrap, but not sure if I will quickly need more and therefore will need to use the emergency fund. Her elevator pitch is, I design and make jewelry that cherishes women's deepest emotions. When you get that up and running, I definitely want to see your product. Okay. Um, this question is almost like looking into a crystal ball. You're not going to know until you're in it whether or not you're going to need more money. Um, congratulations on getting that six month emergency fund. That is so important to have. Um, but there's a few ways of looking at it. If you take a little bit of it and get your business going and you're creating more revenue, then you can replenish it that much faster. Um, myself. I would not want to just take the full chunk of what I just worked so hard saving up for and have a goal for. Um, I wouldn't want to just take all that and throw it into something not knowing if it will go or produce anything. I mean, I believe it would. 
um, jewelry, people buy jewelry all the time. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if you could possibly just do it month by month and not just take the whole chunk out and throw it into the business, but if you could strategically plan how you want to market it, uh, whatever investment you need to make into the materials to, to make the product and all that stuff, I would just take, I would take out the minimum amount needed to, to do what you want to do um, and support that. And at the same time, you would also have the goal of getting that replenished as quickly as possible. Um, so if I were you, I would do month by month and just kind of see what happens. Uh, I hope that helped. The next question is from Jake Carlisle. How to overcome feeling overwhelmed? By the way, I apologize. I'm having a lot of sinus issues going on, so you might hear me sniffing and I sound like I'm all stuffed up because I am. <laughs> um, how, how to overcome feeling overwhelmed. Background, real estate. Uh, he does real estate, flips, Airbnb, rentals. I'm a full-time student and I also manage my business as well as all my personal investments. It's very stressful and sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough. Um, I get overwhelmed very easily. Uh, I think that's probably pretty normal for us entrepreneurs because our minds are constantly racing. Got to do this, got to do that, got to take care of this, take care of that. And so it is very easy to become overwhelmed. Um, I would ask the question, what is it that makes you feel like you're not doing enough? How are you gauging that? Is it the amount of money you have in, into these things? Is it uh, that you have a lot of extra time left over to be doing more? Uh, being a full-time student in itself is a quote-unquote job. Um, so I'm not sure what you're gauging that on. But when I feel overwhelmed, I get all my thoughts onto paper. I typically use sticky notes. Um, and, I'll, and I will write out like each thought or each uh, goal or whatever the case may be. I kind of separate them so that just one is on a sticky note. I put those on a wall. And I just throw them up there, you know, just throw them up there. And then when I feel like I've gotten them all out of my head and onto paper, I will look at those and put them into order of priority. Um, what I found with me is I, I tend to get caught in the little details. And I hate details, but I will get caught in them and take way too much time dealing with the little things and so it's very easy to get overwhelmed I also well I, I don't think you have a whole lot of extra time for hobbies but I also use hobbies like crafting that forces me to completely stop thinking about business at all and just kind of let it all sit in there while I'm thinking about something else and then it's it seems to kind of reel me back in um so those are some things I do when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, hopefully that'll help. But good luck with your school. And, and uh, definitely don't discount that because that's a lot of, that's a lot of work. I did it before. Oh, let's see. Uh, my next question is from my buddy, Zach Knock. Zach, how you doing, buddy? All right, so he said, how do you start a training program for employees? What are the bare bones structure needed for a successful program? Uh, background is my company, Diamond State Technology, specializes in working with access control, cameras, automation, and security systems for both residential and commercial applications. The reason why I'm asking this question is I'm growing rap rapidly and I need guidance on how to build a six month training program for my technicians. Thank you mentors for your valuable and irreplaceable knowledge. Um, love you, Zach. Okay, so when, when I am 
doing a training program for anybody, I always start out with a written structure. And again, I use sticky notes, but I use the great big war room type sticky notes and I put it up on a wall and I start diagramming out how I want that to, to work. And I leave a bunch of space in between so that I can, as I'm thinking of the items I want to go over, um, I still have that room to kind of squeeze that in. So I start out with my war room plan on the wall. And then I'm a huge fan of videos. Video training, I feel, is crucial because it completely takes away an employee's excuses. Um, they, they then can't say, oh, I didn't know that. Or when I read that in the manual, I thought it meant da da da. A video is so much easier to to really get your point across. And, and it's a resource that they can always go back to. It's not like you said it once and now it's gone. Like it's documented, it's there. They have no more excuses. Um, so that would, that would be what I would do. It is what I do. And um, I think it's great that you're moving forward with this training plan. I wish I had, had done like some type of a video training for our technicians years ago. Um, but I, I do want to hear about how that goes and what you end up doing with it. So, um, okay, the next question is from Robin Turpin. Hi, Robin. Um, what tools do you use for staying positive? Thank you. Um, her background is she owns Art for Calm. Elevator Pitch is as an artist. I help people feel moments of calm through my oil paintings of sunsets. I've seen your paintings of sunsets and they are very beautiful. So I, I get that. Awesome. You do a great job. So how do I stay positive? I'm lucky in that um, positivity is my, my natural state. Uh, it's actually hard for me to be negative, so I'm not sure how I could tell a negative person to be positive. Um, however, when I do get into a negative state, I typically use music and crafts to pull me out of that and get me back into my, into my positivity zone or whatever you want to call it um there i have a favorite band um musician i actually personally know her the band name is hiree h-i-r-i-e i love her music something about her voice and the words and the music can bring me out of a depression like no other music can i don't know what it is that's what i use it works. I can listen to a few of her songs and I just am ready to go rock the world again. Um, so I use music and I use crafts. Well, oil painting could be considered a craft, so you're already kind of doing that. But you could find another craft to do that would kind of take you away from whatever's causing negativity. I don't know if maybe sometimes you have issues with your clouds if they're not turning out right in your paintings um or if you just get down on the whole business end i get that too um i also sometimes for an escape i will just pull up youtube and watch funny animal videos those are great those are great and it makes you laugh and gets you just kind of back onto that I don't know, just, just a whole different mindset. So anyway, I hope that helps. You're always welcome to reach out if you're feeling uh, negative or down. I'll try to figure out some way to make you laugh. So anyway, I hope that helps, Robin. Okay, my next question is from Morgan Katz. Hey, Morgan. Um, what strategy strategies do you use to build your network? Her background is I work with companies to help them maintain their season tickets to concert venues and sports teams, etc. I'm very active on LinkedIn 
and in-person networking events prior to COVID, but looking for new options to add in. I'm always looking for ways to use networking groups or associations to develop more relationships or get even more buy-in with large customers. We fill the gaps in corporate event ticketing by helping companies manage their season and event tickets. We help them com compliant, provide trackable data while erasing the, the process of season ticket management, easing, sorry, uh, crazy, easing the process of season ticket management. Um, so you, I don't have a, a huge network. I, ha I have a network for sure, but I don't have like a huge network. Um, in my business, I don't really need a huge network with what I do because I just, as of right now, I just have a service company that services two counties. But in your particular situation, you know, nationwide, worldwide, I, I don't know. Um, but one thing I would recommend is if you are a female business owner, you could actually, um, yes, Shirley, I do. You know, it's been a gift and a curse to naturally be positive. Sorry, I got distracted by the message. Um, if you're a woman-owned small business, you could actually uh, get certified and join NABO. It's N-A-B-O-W, the National Association of, of Women Business Owners. I can, send, I can send you that link. Um, but NABO is a nationwide organization that within itself has, um, I don't know what they call them, charters? Uh, they have different charters within states. Like, for instance, I'm in Ventura County, so there is a Nabo Ventura County, in addition to my nationwide network of members. And that's been a great resource for a lot of different things. So my recommendation is um, private Facebook groups are a great way. Um, one of the things I'm, one of my hobbies I'm developing is cookie decorating. So I joined this cookie decorating Facebook group. I've started to kind of get to know some of the people. They led me into a cookies after dark Facebook group, which is very entertaining. Um, so it just kind of leads to other things. So if you're joining Facebook groups of things that you're interested in, um, or the, the, the sports teams, you know, um, that can, I'm not sure if, see, when I was a season ticket holder, I was a season ticket holder with AEG and I'm not sure how your organization, um, operates because I don't know enough about it. But as far as getting a bigger network group, I would say, uh, joining the groups that support the teams that you often work with, um, joining NABO for the woman-owned small business. And then, um, I'm not sure if you're, I, I, joining your local chamber of commerce probably wouldn't be a big help, but it could lead to other people spreading your name to other people. As we know, this is a very small world and somebody that you're sitting next to in your town may know the owner of a team in Philadelphia, you know, or Pennsylvania, whatever. Like, you just never know who, who, who somebody sitting next to you is associated with also. So that's my, that's my recommendation. Just uh, the Facebook groups, the organizations, um, that always leads to great networking. And I hope that helps. Okay, so my next question is from Joe Nugent. Question, what do you suggest as far as paying independent contractors who, who I contract to help me facilitate providing my services to my customers? Uh, business description, I own a home inspection business and I am turning away five to eight inspections per week. I'm looking to partner with another inspection company, a solopreneur, who is not as busy as so I can make more money while working less. How do I do the billing? 
collect from the client, then send to the other inspection company, have them collect them, they send me a check. Hmm. Okay, so, hi Joe. Um, within, within this industry, I'm curious what is typical. My first uh, off-the-cuff answer is never let somebody else collect your money. Um, if it were me, I want to make sure that my customer only sees my name, my logo, my information, regardless of who I've subbed that to. Like we've even gone so far as to give people that we've sub subcontract work to our own work shirts. Like we make them wear our work shirts when they're on our jobs because of that fear of them poaching your customers. And I'm not sure, I've, I've never asked this question of you and I should have, but with the home inspections, is that a recurring thing or is that like a one time, one and done, like to sell a house or or is that recurring? Because I, I think your the other arm of your business, I believe is recurring inspections, but I'm not sure on this one. If this is the one where they call you to watch their property while they're gone, I definitely wouldn't let another company um, be collecting my money. So um, then also, um, I'm wondering how your contract works um, because I would suggest if you're looking for like how much you want to pay them, because I'm not real clear on the question, um, I would suggest getting an estimate from them and then you mark it up. You mark it up to your customer. In my industry, we use a multiplier 1.6. Um, some people use 1.8. Some people completely just go crazy with it. Um, but I would assume that it, when you're writing up that contract, that rate would be in the contract. Um, and then if, if you're looking for what would be a reasonable amount to pay them, because that might have been your question too, I would then use the resource of Indeed or ZipRecruiter and look up a similar um, job description for that and see what the going rate is and then base it on that. Um, but either way, you, you always want to be making that money. And you want to keep your name in the forefront of your customers' minds. Um, it's a slippery slope. Um, anyway, I hope that helps. If you want to expand on that question, you know where to find me. You can message me, whatever. But those are my thoughts. Okay, the next question is from Karina Stare. What factors would you take into consideration when deciding between working on your own side hustle versus with your spouse on their business? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the background. My husband runs his own videography business that did approximately 250000 in 2020. He has no employees, only contractors, no CRM, and does almost administrative tasks ma manually. My experience is in administration operations management, so fixing these things, setting up systems, and running them behind the scenes are all strengths of mine. That being said, working with a spouse seems like it could have additional challenges I am not fully aware of. I guarantee you there are challenges about working with a spouse that you're not fully aware of. <laughs> I do this. I work with my spouse. Um, it's not easy. My first question though is, does he want help? If, is he asking you to come and work in his business or are you assuming that he wants you to come and work in his business? That would be my first question. If he's not asking you for help, let him do his thing, um, and work on your side hustle. If he is asking you for help, um, I would recommend clearly defining the roles. I would recommend not overstepping those roles on both sides. 
I would recommend having um, personality assessments of each of you. Uh, it, it pretty much saved my marriage by having these personality assessments. We did the culture index and uh, it completely flipped my mindset on how I was viewing my husband. And I can honestly say that I believe it saved my marriage. Now, if we stay together, great. If, if we end up getting divorced, then okay. But at this point in time, I am not getting divorced because I now understand his personality better. Um, so that's my experience with that. Um, boundaries. Boundaries. You both need to have boundaries and you both need to respect each other's boundaries. And that's what it's all about. Um feel free to reach out with me or to, to reach out to me. If you have a specific situation, I can tell you what I would do in that situation. Um, I actually had a coach that would, that I would have a situation happen. I would tell him about that situation and he would explain it to me in a way that I understand it better. I understood it better. And so then I was able to respond differently than I would have um, naturally responded. And that was a huge help, too. Uh, that keep me posted. All right. My last question is from Sanel. I said, oh, I haven't seen you in a long time. I hope you're doing well. Um, if you have some extra cash in business, what would be your next move to grow the business? His background is I'm in title searching. I'm in title searching business. We provide B2B services. Our clients are title insurance companies. Okay, so if I have extra cash in my company, what I would do right away is I would hire a salesperson, put them through Tom Black's sales training and get them generating even more extra cash for you. Um, as Sean and Tom always talk about, you can never go wrong with investing in your company to get more sales. And, um, you know, if everything else is good and taken care of, your marketing is good, your uh, customer base, your existing customer base, all the customers are satisfied, um, if you've got all of those things buttoned up and you still have extra cash, hire a salesperson to get more cash. So that is my two cents. Uh, I don't see any questions here. Heather, love you. Hi, honey. Um, Nick, you're amazing too, buddy. Sean, yay, I'm here finally. I'm sorry I was late. Um, and Shirley, thank you. Love you, girl. And I hope you all have a wonderful month and I'll see you soon.